Good evening all! How are you all doing? Welcome to episode 50. Thank you all so much for the lovely comments. Pond Pimp, Medigan, and Jace. I'm seeing in the chat so far, but also hello to Bremans Decas Smurf, um, Infinisil, and Rokorus, and Slokol. Slokol. <laughs> and Squeezius B, hello! Good to see you here too. Thanks for all hanging out. Audio video was 50 times okay. Everything's gonna be 50 times everything right now, including 50 times bugs. Uh, yeah, thank you all so much for making this work uh, and being here all the time. You make it fun. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's weird. We've got like episode 50. We've been going since last May. Um, we've got what is it? It's like the YouTube channels at like 160,000 views and 1,800 followers and all that nonsense. It's like, it's very strange for a tiny, it's meant to be a little lisp channel. And again, we're, we're low numbers, obviously, but it's so, so much more successful than I thought it would be, which is really nice. And so, um, I love it. <gasps> Maybe change the title to episode 50. Oh, I'm so good. Let's see, a year and a bit and I still haven't mastered Twitch. Uh, there it is, 49. Let's get that up to 50. One second, 50. Normal mapping goes to... What the fuck are we doing this time? Um, mutable texture storage or something. Texture... It's actually to do with uh, texture completeness. Mutable texture completeness. Completeness. We're going to be hacking on um, Keppel today. Update information. Hopefully that doesn't fuck up anything in the stream. Doot, doot, doot. We'll see. Um... Alright, so yes, what are we working on? Yeah, it's going to be less uh, visuals this week. In fact, probably near enough no visuals. And we're going to instead be hacking on uh, Keppel. Quick recap of last week, because that got very rushed at the end. Um, yeah, is there anything I can bring up here? I mean, I guess, I mean, the main takeaway from last week was the fact that um, all that crazy math we did at the end, which was wrong, by the way. I fixed that after the stream, and I've um, pushed a fix to the branch. Um, was that in order to be able to use normal maps properly, um, like it, the normal map contains a vector, and so you need to know what space it was originally in, and that's defined by uh, the normal from the surface, which we have, and that's easy. Um, but then we had to derive the tangent and bitangent, and they had to respect, um, they had to be. Uh, done in the UV coordinate space because that's where the vector um, for the normal map was also um, computed. So we're basically making those things line up. Often you'll find models have uh, tangents and bitangents baked in already so you don't have to c calculate them on every frame or anything like that. Um, so yes, it's cool. Uh, or every, calculate them on every frame. What am I talking about? Calculate them once your program is running. Definitely not every frame. Anyway, I've also taken your advice and I'm seeing your chats both over here on my normal machine and down in my corner over here. So behind my face in this region, um, I've got a, a little IRC uh, thing open to the Twitch channel. So I should be able to see a little more easily when you're saying stuff. I will try and uh, I'll see if that makes a difference because <laughs> I'm really sorry about last time. That did not. That was not good for audience participation because I was just like, why is everything broken? While well, you guys are telling me exactly why it's broken. So let's see what's going on. Yeah, cheers, everyone. This is cool. Um, the Little Lisp channel. Great content. Cheers, man. Uh, Metian seeing some lag. Interesting. Um, <laughs> Father from Twitch. Is there a starting point for this episode on GitHub? Um, kind of. It, yes. I have, I have branched out. So if we go to Keppel... Um, I've made a branch called uh, Complete Mutable Textures. Um, we're not going, again, we're not going to be working on the um, Play With Verts stuff or, or really doing any kind of study this time, other than we're going to be at the spec a lot. Um, the issue that I have, oh, also, I'll let you know, uh, this branch is branched off from another one that has not merged to master yet called Feature PBO. I started looking into, the, um, into support for pixel buffer objects. And which basically boils down to um, uploading to textures from um, f from buffers and places like that. Uploading and downloading um, to textures from buffers, um, which is really cool because both assets are owned by the driver. Um, it can do that completely concurrently. 
as long as you don't touch the buffer in the meantime. It's completely async, which is great for uploads and stuff like this. I mean, like, it can do it async from the um, CPU side as well. Um, so, yeah, I was looking into uh, supporting that, but then I ran into a whole bunch of issues. And the first one was to do with um, a, a alignment in textures. So, clap the clap, where are we? Um, you shall not like this. You shall prompt. There we go. So, you have your texture, which is a which um, is a data structure that was rather annoying. I oh, and it comes back. Okay, I've just learned a thing. Never mind me. Right. Okay. So yeah, let's say we have a two D texture. Um, and I was going to be talking about oh yeah, a, a dressing of things. Um, and we have rows. Or so we have rows of data going up. Um, obviously the Elements in the rows have a type. So let's say it was, um, what should we say it was? Ah, oh, wrong buttons. Uh, let's say it's int eight. Um, so they're one by each. Now, um, GL has a concept of a row alignment. So at the end of each row, um, sorry, each row will be aligned to a certain uh, byte. So you can say that the row alignment is one, you can say it's two, you can say it's four, or you can say it's eight. And so if you have a texture which is like for example three bytes wide um, sorry three elements wide and each element is one byte so we'll use our int eights again and but your row alignment is set to four you're gonna get one additional byte of padding put on each row um, so again your rows are gonna be aligned to byte four so that was not something I was respecting properly so, and I wanted that to be pretty transparent. So I've made C arrays and buffer back GPU arrays and all that kind of stuff support the concept of row alignment. Um, that started working better. And that means that when you do uploads and downloads, it knows what to set the parameters to behind the scenes. And, <laughs> wait a second. There's some action going on in the chat right now. So this we can do it here saying, um, no gift for the 50th episode, but a gif. Oh boy. This is gonna be... <laughs> that face, the dev of our face. That's me fucking up. I mean, that's a safe bet. If, if there's a video of me doing something, it's probably me fucking up. <laughs> that's fantastic. Darius! Hey man, late once again, but I'm here now. Um, good to see you, dude. Welcome to episode 50. So what are we gibbering about? Oh yes, row alignment. Row alignment means we can um, set the um, pixel upload parameters for textures correctly now. Um, I ran into another issue, which was a really embarrassing one, but I'll just tell you anyway. Um, so, there we go. Let's get rid of that. So, when you define an array, let's actually just do this in the REPL. When you define an array in Lisp, you do make, array, um, and we give it some dimensions. So we're going to say it's um, 3 by 5. And um, let's just give it an initial. Ah, fuck it. Let's just. Can we just do that? Yeah, okay. Right, so what's important here is this is three rows, three rows of five elements each. But we've been. Um, but when we're, when we're working in GL, we're working with textures and with spatial coordinates and all this kind of stuff. We're used to our coordinate systems being um, going X, Y, and Z, W, whatever. So we do spatial. So this is the number of elements in a row, which actually maps to this one here. And then this is the number of rows and this is the number of planes going back into that um, array. So, or, or into that space. So when we've defined textures, we say that they're, you know, a, one, a 100 uh, by 200 pixel texture. If that was an array, um, that would be 200 rows of 100 elements. Now, that's all well and good, but when I was doing uploads from um, Lisp arrays to um, C arrays, I was just taking the dimensions as they were, right? I was just taking this, oh right, the C array is now a three by five. 
but that's not correct. Um, big, well, I mean, it could be correct if we say that our indexing strategy is going to be the same as uh, in common list, which would make sense. Um, and that works really well for C arrays, that works really well for buffer back GPU arrays, and then you get to textures. Because you define your texture to be 200 by 100, sorry, well, up here, 100 by 200. And then you use TexRef, which gives you that texture back G um, GPU array. And suddenly it's saying the coordinates are this, the dimensions are this. And if you're not prepared for that switching around, that can be rather confusing. You're trying to think in terms of textures and spatial things. Um, and so I thought, okay, so yeah, maybe we have to special case for that and things like this. But then you look at viewports, which also need to be um, in a kind of XYZ style. Um, and I, I'm just going to call it spatial coordinate uh, kind of stuff. So X, Y, Z. And you've got surfaces, which want to be in that as well. And all of a sudden, you've got half the API split. You've got this kind of like Lisp and C arrays and buffer back GPU arrays. And then in one style, and then you have textures and textured back you, um, what is it? Texture backed GPU arrays and FBOs and all that kind of stuff in another style. And it's, uh, it's really messy. So what I decided in the end is just fuck it. As soon as you put it into a Keppel data structure, we're doing this XYZ thing. Which means... Um, which means I'm pressing the wrong button. 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 Right. Um, which means if you do a make C array from the last thing we just used, and say the element type is uint8, just so it knows something, you'll notice that we made an array 3 by 5 but it's a C array five by three, because this is X and Y. So that is something that I've actually gone through and made sure is consistent now, because there was all kinds of fuck ups and with all the other texture stuff, it's kind of kept me busy. Um, so I've done some work on that last weekend and a lot of any time I could squeeze in, I, I've been doing that. However, there have been other problems and they were interesting. So let's go to, okay, uh, capital GitHub. Right. Was it here? Hopefully. Malcolm Still, the awesome Malcolm Still, who's been working on um, making a Wayland compositor called a Lubus using Keppel, um, which is awesome. Um, but he ran into this interesting case when he was um, taking a texture from another library, and when he was rendering it, he was just getting blackness. Nothing. And he managed eventually to get it working. It took a little while. Um, oh no, that was that was a kind of uh, false start there. Um, but when he finally got it working, it was down to this. He had to set that the, the uh, texture max level uh, was zero. And what it what it, that boiled down to was um, the sampler that we were using when we were reading from the texture um, expected there to be mip maps, and so. And the default mipmap level for a texture is 1,000. It just every single one of them goes, oh, it's got 1,000 mipmap levels, right? This texture max level is, is set to 1,000 by default, which is rather strange. Um, and so, um, yeah, so when he was rendering it, it was trying to look for mipmaps that weren't there. And so he was just getting blackness. So when he set this, then it said, oh, I can't look any further. And then it just worked. It also would have worked if we had used the correct, um, correct the sampler, which we're going to look into in a few days. But that got me thinking about just uh, textures in general. Um, and I ended up going to common mistakes when I found one of the first things um, that they were talking about. Was it, was it here? Let's have a look. Dun, 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 dun. Texture, up some, texture upload and pixel reads. I saw that. Where was it? There was some texture stuff that was rather... Brr. Can't find it now. But it basically tells you to do exactly um, this thing. Texture upload and pixel res... No, it wasn't that. But anyway, yes. Um, it got me looking into um, texture stuff again. And there's one part that said there are... Two different kinds of storage. Let's just see what's going on down here. Just got itchy nose. Um, uh, 
<laughs> Hold of him's liking the API change. Darius saying it sounds bonkers. <laughs> bonkers the situation or bonkers the row alignment or just my solution. Um, all could be true. Yeah, where was I? Um, yes, when you define a texture, there are two styles of storage. Uh, here they have a separate article for it even. Let's go have a look there. Um, they have mutable and immutable storage. And it, it sounds weird, like you would have a texture w which was immutable, but that's not quite what they're saying. It's not that you can't go and change the contents of the texture. It's that the, the format of the texture, things like the dimensions of the texture, the... Um, the uh, image format, the, the basically the type of the um, of the pixels in there, um, the it's a bunch of other things as well. Different basically a bunch of stuff is just baked in stone once you've created it, and this is really cool. So um, and it was it became available in four point two, but this extension um, allows it to be used on a lot of other versions, and it's rather well supported in a lot of places. So Keppel checks for this extension, and if it's there. They caught ARB. If, if, if it's there, we use it regardless. So we always use a mutable storage when we can, um, and then we're meant to fall back to mutable storage and mutable bloody hell. That's a lot of stuff. Mutable storage. Evening, kid. Kid seven seven eight. How am I meant to pronounce that? Because I'm old and I don't know these things. Um, oh, people putting links in the chat. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yes. Kid. Kid works. Here's looking at you. Um, so yes, when we get to mutable storage, this is the older way of doing things. And... This is kind of interesting. We'll probably go through this soon. And they have this concept of texture completeness, which basically means you have to. There's a bunch of stuff you have to do before GL considers the texture valid, um, and it uh, basically involves making sure that you've allocated all the memory for all the images and and all the mint maps of all the images and all this kind of stuff before you try and use them. Um, Keppel wants to give you valid things all the time. Like, it wants to give you controls to allow you to um, basically set everything. Um, but it also wants to make sure that whenever you ask for something, you get something valid. And I think the mo most extreme example of that is that when we do make FBR. So we say here that we want um, one attachment on the uh, color attachment zero, and we want one depth attachment. When you make this, it complains because I'm in the wrong package. Um, continue. No, we're going to do abort. That'll be fine. Um, let's do Keppel make FBO. We get an FBO back. Um, and because we didn't specify any other information other than we wanted these attachments, it goes and... Let's just put this def far, the dreaded def far. Um... Oh, of course, I'm gonna be doing this a lot. <laughs> Temp zero, capital. Right, it goes and makes a texture, um, but it doesn't know what size to make the texture, so it takes it from the current viewport. Um, it allocates that texture, it attaches it to the FBO. Basically, it makes sure that you always have a valid FBO. Of course, you can pass in as all the details you want, and um, you don't have to rely on these fallbacks. But what's nice is just by saying make FBO, you get something that's valid and ready to use. You can write into it immediately. Um, and I want that uh, quality everywhere because other, because because we're doing a lot of REPL-driven development, when you type something, if you have to type something and then you have to remember, okay, yeah, there's these five other commands I have to do to this texture before I can use it, that's not very REPL-friendly. I want to be able to make something, I want to be able to render into it and then throw it away. Um, so yeah. So, let's get back to over here. So yeah, we have a whole bunch of code here for allocating immutable textures properly. Like depending on what things are 
uh, passed in. And then I looked up, and here's the allocate mutable texture. It's got one entry, and I don't know why. And I've got this note here saying, well, this is clearly missing a lot, but I wrote that relatively recently compared to the code. I don't know what's up. Um, I think I just never got round to doing this. And because I was, like, every machine I have, regardless of version, like, I think uh, this laptop here is, like, on uh, GL 3.4, but it already supports immut um, immutable textures. So I've never run into these issues, which is kind of bad, but it seems like most other people haven't either. Um... But because of that uh, bug that I showed you, it's all back in my head, and so I really wanted to have a look at this. But this part of the spec is fucking hairy. So we are going to have to go through very carefully um, in order to get this right. And I need coffee. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Good saying, when you make it, it dies. Yeah, that's a feature. It's a feature. It, it comes free with all code that I write. If you, if you try and use it, it doesn't work. Um, mutable storage, okay. Da, 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 da. OpenGL functions of the form. GL text image are used to create mutable storage for images within a texture. Calling any of these on a texture that has a mutable storage created for it is an error. Okay, so yeah, don't mix and match. Um, the immutable calls are the equivalent of malloc. They allocate the memory, but they don't put anything in it. All the mutable storage calls are capable of both allocating memory and transferring pixels. Now, we don't necessarily want to do this straight away. What I actually want to do is just handle the allocation and make sure this thing is set up. And this is all down to this thing. Um, all of these things allocate only one mipmap level of the texture at a time. Um, because each bitmap level is created individually, it's more difficult to ensure that the allocated texture is complete. Well, let's go have a look at that, which is actually back in here. Completeness. Here we are. A big old section. Yes. They have a concept of completeness. And the complete texture is one in which it... Uh, one is one which is in a logical state to be used for many operations. Until a texture is complete, it cannot be used in a shader sampling or image load store operations. So basically, everything we'd want to do with it, you're not allowed to do until it's complete. And attaching an image from a texture to a frame buffer object requires certain forms of completeness. A texture object is complete if it fills the following three kinds of completeness requirements. So this is what we need to do, right? Uh, and this is, again, the immutable stuff. If you make, if you use immutable storage for your textures, it's complete by default. They do all the work for you, which is really nice. But we're not dealing with really nice now. We're dealing with classic GL. 3.3 GL. Okay, so let's have a look. Mipmap completeness essentially requires that there is a consistency between the images, formats, and the allocated mipmap levels. So basically, each mipmap level must be using the same format. Okay, so don't go from like bytes to vec for, like don't go from ints to floats essentially and stuff like that um you've got a bunch of format stuff in there number of components all that kind of jazz um each allocated mipmap level must have a consistent size relative to the one before it the width height depth of a mipmap is the um width height depth of the base level divided by two to the power of k so yeah we're getting half the size each time we go down a mipmap level must be that so we're going to need to follow this as well, where k is the mipmap level and 0 is the base level. Um, so yeah, 2 to the 0 would be 1. Whatever the thing is divided by 1 is going to be no change. Meta Yan, you rock! He's just making sure all the links are in. Better than a bot. Um, Okay, and I, I have actually been getting them in the videos now. So I am linking them in the, in the uh, descriptions of videos. Okay, so what else? Um, oh yeah, just a little note that 1D array textures have a width and height, but the height specifies the number of array layers in the array of 1D te textures. Um, <laughs> it's lovely how fucking messed up some of the descriptions, like how... Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you're going to have an array of 1D things? That's a 2D texture, which it is, but also couldn't we just have a separate function for that? Can we just have a separate name where things make sense? No. Use the same thing. Or use the same thing with a specific flag. Blah. The mipmap range has to be between... Um, 
Okay, the mipmap range texture parameters are given where GL texture base level, yeah, is less than or equal to GL texture max level. This was the one that gave us the, the um, solved the other problem we were having in that GitHub issue. Um, the base and max levels must only specify mipmap levels that have been allocated. Okay, so if if we specify it, um, if it falls within this range, they they must have been allocated. That's how I'm reading that. Does that make sense to you guys? Because I I want to. I got a my. I've been looking at this chat. I've been quite look, good at looking at over there, but my one down here was in the wrong position. Um, okay, so th that's. And again, mipmap completion only applies if the minification filter filtering parameters uses mipmaps. If it does not, then the texture is always mipmap complete. So if we're sampling, go back to the REPL again. If we uh, let's actually do attachment text, we've got this texture. Right, if we sample that texture. Ah, oh, here we go again. <laughs> okay. We sample that texture and then can I just look, can I just inspect its parameters? Yeah, we can see here that it's minify filter is linear mipmap linear. This means that it's going to do, if it's between, uh, if you're sampling essentially between um, pixels, how does it do this? If I get this right. Yeah, it's going to do linear interpolation between um, the values in the same level. And it's also going to do linear. This last linear here is talking about um, mipmap linear. So it's going to do linear interpolation between the different mipmap levels. By specifying this, we're saying that, yeah, we're using mipmapping. Now, Keppel sets this as default because most of the time... Um, or at least in all of the examples we've been doing so far, we've pulled in a texture because we just want to we want to put it on an object, and there we want as the object gets further away it to sample from the lower mipmap levels because the fidelity is going to be higher. Like overall, we're going to get less aliasing. Um... <laughs> um... I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say though. That's crazy. Me. That is. I'm trying to even work out what that thing is. Sorry. it's Emoji type nonsense. What is that? Cool cat. That does not look like a cat from where I'm sitting. Uh, anyway, I'm distracted. What do I do? Not cool cats. It was things. Yes. Anyway, so this uh, minify filter is specifying that there's going to be mipmaps, but there wasn't mipmaps in that texture, so it was mipmap incomplete, which means balls to walls. Um, so what we need to do is. When you say make texture, one of, a couple of things you get to specify is you get to specify mipmap. Yeah, you get to specify mipmap, but you can either say true, which means we um, generate as many mipmap levels as makes sense. So it's like, like obviously, um, your texture has to at least be one by one in size, so you can't mipmap lower than that. So we just go from whatever size it is down to maximum to minimum size. Uh, we generate all those, or you can pass in an integer there, and that says the number of mipmap levels, and we also set that, that up correctly. You can also optionally say generate mipmaps down here, um, which will downsample the content using uh, OpenGL's min uh, generate mipmap feature. So, so uh, we've got that, but um, what we need to do is, if this is not uh, nil, then we need to make sure that the texture is map complete holy balls there, there's going to be so much to remember this is a jargon heavy episode but we we need to get this this is this is what makes keppel valuable um because otherwise you have to think about this all the time you have to think about whether your fbo is complete before you can use it and all this kind of stuff and yes you should be doing that but again like if you're just trying to sit down and fart something out get an idea out of your head play with something that's not necessarily the default you want is to be oh it's broken until i fix it you know Okay, so cube map completeness. This is a nice, simple one. Um, for every mipmap level, each face of the cube must have the same size. Fine. I mean, as then, and that 
by that logic, it just means that as long as the base level is um, is 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 square, then all the other map map levels are going to be square because they're all half the size of the one before. And then for each map map level, every face of a cube map must have the same internal format. Again, that's the kind of requirement we had um, here as well. So, and that's not a problem. That's going to be fine. I don't think we even give an option to allow you to do that wrong. Image format completeness. Okay, so the image format a texture uses can also affect its completeness depending on its sampling parameters. Ugh. This is the stuff where, like, we could avoid work by not doing these things if we knew that we weren't going to be using them in that way. So in the mipmap case, if we don't have mipmaps, we don't need to do mip worry about mipmap completeness. If we're not using a cube map, we don't need to worry about cube map completeness. This one's going to be interesting, though. So it says integer color formats and stencil index formats. This gets just, oh, it's, it's like, it's like just being waterboarded with a spec. Um, it's very hard to keep it all in your head. Right, okay. Let's read this and get all the way through the sentence. Integer color formats and stencil index formats, whether this or that, do not support linear filtering. As such, the GL texture mag filter sampling parameter must be GL nearest, and the GL texture min filter must either be nearest or GL nearest min nearest. Okay, so what this says to me is that, right, so we don't actually set pr um, parameters on the texture most of the time. No, we don't. We we um, use samplers in all cases um, because they're available. I think, let me just let me just make sure I'm not talking bullshit here. Um, samplers. Yeah, I think samplers are just available in. Every, in every version that we actually care about, which is 3.2, 3.1, 3.2 up in Keppel. Um, or it might even be 3.3 and up, actually. I can't remember what version I support now. But but yeah, I think these are always available. And there is never a downside to using one of these, other than it's another object to manage. And Keppel has made that simple. You just say sample, and then that's what you're using. And what's nice about it is it lines up better with the shaders because they always take like sampler 2D, sampler 3D, things like this. So you're actually, the t object, type of object you're passing matches the kind of parameter that you're meant to be passing, which is nice. Um, Ponder Pimp is now racing Median to get links in. This is nice. This is the kind of fights I enjoy. Uh, keep that going. Um, so yeah, we use samplers all over the place. So it doesn't matter as much. We don't have to worry about the texture parameters. But the sampling parameters do matter. But it feels like something we can check very easily. Because it only applies if... Uh, where are we? Here. I'm just pointing at the wrong thing. Where am I? Um, image... No, image... This one. Um, uh, what, what are we doing? No, it was this one. Integer color formats. Right. If you're using an integer color format, then we could just not allow you to, to make a sampler with those parameters. We can just check when you try and change the parameters and say no. Nope. Um, a lot of these options, this is actually something I'm going to do um, later on. Is I want to... Um, <laughs> to say, Take that meta! Fuck yeah! All right, um, I want to make a build mode for Kappel which strips out all of the checks. Because we do a lot of checking, and that is overhead. They, there's, there's no way around it. It's not a lot. We're careful about where we do it, but there's there are there is some, and um, we could have a compile flag that you can specify um, that then will build Kevl in a different way, and it just and we'll just have conditionals at compile time that just don't emit any checks and remove all the checks from the code that we do have, um, and that way we will get. We'll be able to get faster code, but we'll have all of this for um, for when we're actually developing, which is when we need the protection because we're trying to get things done, not fight. Well, we're fighting in the chat, which is awesome. Okay. Let's have a look. That was this one. So we've still got another kind of completeness go. Sampler objects and completeness. Oh, wait. 
this is the mm, wait what when using a texture with a sampler object which we are does this not apply to that okay i guess the filtering is not part of the sampling parameters yeah i guess because it's texture parameters as well Okay, when using a texture with a sampler object, the completeness of that texture will be based on the sampler object sampling parameters rather than the internal sampling parameters. Yes, that's what I was trying to talk about before. For example... Okay, so this is just restating. This is just restating. If you're, if you're sampling using mipmaps, then you better be mipmap complete. If you're using integer formats, then you better follow these rules. Um... So a texture may be considered complete or not based on where it's used. So one thing will be like, yeah, this is a complete texture. Hooray. Everything's fine. Another one's like, nope, fuck you. Okay. An image load store does not use sampler objects, but it still performs texture completeness checks. It will apply the completeness rules based on the texture's internal sampling parameters, not those of a sampler object. Interesting. I need to look at this very quickly because that's important. Where are we at? Okay. 36 minutes in and we're reading. And we're going to be doing a lot of that. Um, I don't actually have support for this yet, I don't think. This is a 4.2. This is one of the features I haven't implemented, which is just like the general support for... Actually, hmm, I wonder. Because the Vario compiler has all the functions for all these versions. Um, so it probably has the functions to do this stuff. I don't think I provided types for that. It's kind of interesting. I don't actually know how you're meant to work with images in um, in shaders yet. But I would love to expose them um, as in Keppel at least as uh, the GPU arrays, just like we do on the, like when we're working from the REPL and just make that whole thing consistent. Uh, that would be nice. So anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that. So that's being able to read and write from images in textures, which is crazy town. Like I'm so used to just using like an SSBO or something like that for that kind of stuff. Um, but I guess that was supported earlier. Wait a second, no, that was GL 4.2 and up, which is around SSBO time. I wonder the, what the advantage of using that is. I could go and look, but we're like there's there's enough stuff to read today. Let's have a look. Okay, so that's this is what we're going through. We need to deal with this shit. Completeness. Um so we need to Yeah, we need to look at um, basically, I need, I need to look at what we do currently with mutable textures. So, I'm going to go for a read through our code. And textures is big. It's one of those things I remember doing this and just hating it. Um, oops, that is all of the wrong buttons. But at least it was all of them. Um, see, these are text storage calls down here. This is text parameter stuff. Oh, look, I'm actually setting up some base and max level things here. That's interesting. We'll come back to this yet later because the text image 2D stuff, text image uh, stuff is about uploading, well, allocating the memory, I think. Hmm. Let's just have a look. Interesting. I would have expected to see the data argument there. All right, then maybe I've misunderstood what that is. Um, ah, what am I looking for? Right, GL text. Okay, so this is uploading uh, data, text sub image. When you see sub image, it's talking about um, uploading sections. Um, like replacing sections of a te of an immutable a texture with immutable storage, and then this is the equivalent for um, 
for mutable textures. And we can see here that this is, um, these look right, this looks fine. Uh, texture image 3D, texture image 2D, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and the last argument there is a pointer. And that's the pointer to the data that's being uploaded. Or, as we'll soon be able to support in, um, in Keppel once we've got PBO support, if a buffer is bound to the pixel unpack target, and then you do this, it's going to read from that buffer and it's going to use expect this to be a number um, that is an offset into that buffer. That's where it's going to read from. So, yeah. Um, optimization in the compile time of Keppel. Yeah, like, um, it's no... I'm, I'm, I really... I, I'm, I like making this stuff because I want to see how far we can get, you know? Like how... It's, it's not hard to make a wrapper around GL that is very compromised, right? That, like, you want to... I don't, how am I trying to say this? It's cool to be able to use GL from a language... But if it's done in a way that uses that like it, it done in a way that's so clever that it it costs you the performance and efficiency you would need to be able to make something interesting, then that's no good. Like my challenge for myself is I would like to do I would like to make something at some point, just a tech demo or something like this, with graphics that is acceptable for about five years ago. You know? What what was good then? Um if I can do all those kind of things inside Keppel and have it run at a reasonable frame rate, I would be pretty happy. And there's, I've got a whole bunch of stuff um, to do to get to that place. But of course, but uh, and it kind of fits into part of that thing of like, Keppel doesn't want to hide any part of GL because otherwise you're going to hit a point where you're going, oh, I should have just used GL on its own. Like I can't, I, because I can't have this feature, I can't finish the project I want to finish which now means I have to move away from Keppel or away from this thing uh, to something else. And I have to rewrite all my code, which is, again, unacceptable. Um, even if nobody's using this. And there are very few people using it for good reason. Like, it's a niche within a niche within a niche. But I still like the intellectual exercise of it. It's my free time fun, so it's kind of... I get to define, <laughs> I get to define what fun is. And I love this shit. Okay, so that's when we looped around. So... Hmm. I guess we've just got to start looking at these functions now. Like text image 2D. Specify a two dimension ugh. Specify a two dimensional texture image. Okay. So you're specifying which mipmap level um, that we're writing to. We're specifying the format, we're specifying the width and height. <laughs> I love this. This value must be zero. I guess they used to be used for something and now it's deprecated. That stuff makes me laugh. Um... Oh god, you're linking that source as well? Sure, I mean... <laughs> feel free to punish your eyes with that. I mean, it's gonna be on the stream too. Um, no, that is good. I, I just... Okay. So this allows you to set up things. Um, and this Here's an important point, look. Okay, specifies a pointer to the image data in memory, or if a buffer is bound to pixel unpack buffer, it provides an integer offset into the bound buffer object. If a buffer is not bound to a uh, gel pixel unpack buffer and this parameter is null, no pixel transfer will be performed. That's very useful to us because basically what it means is if we set this to null, 
we can use this to alloc um, a mipmap level without doing any transfer, which is what we want. Um, for completeness, when we're talking about mipmap completeness, we're going to want to go through all the mipmap levels and of of all the um, of all the images and uh, allocate them all. <laughs> Squeezy is be saying that's dwarf fortress levels of fun. Yes, man, there's that long form article about dwarf fortress. I love reading about dwarf fortress. I have no interest in playing it. I fucking love that it exists. It's so cool, man. So cool. Um, Median, just for fun. <laughs> totally. Right, where are we at? Okay, so this sounds like the thing we can use to alloc stuff. Um, so that th these guys are going to be our friends. Um, and we've already done... This is what the code should look like to do that, except we're going to set this to null. Um... It's interesting, actually, we use... I need to go and look at sub-image as well, because I don't know something. I don't know many things. That is a very safe statement. Right, here we go. Um, specify a two-dimensional texture sub-image. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Texturing maps a portion of a specific... Spec little, little, little. Map a proportion of a specified texture image into each graphical primitive for which texturing is enabled. Uh, okay. Um, redefines a contiguous subregion of an existing two-dimensional or one-dimensional array texture image. The texels referenced by the data are replaced by a portion of yada yada yada. Okay, so that's fine. Um, this is, I believe... I think we looked at this already. Hmm. Hmm. Where are we? Um. Oh, sub image. It's not there. Sub 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 sub. Okay. Oh no, okay. I thought that these guys only worked with immutable um, textures. But it looks like they work with mutable ones as well. Mutable, yeah, mutable storage textures. Is that right? Um... Oh yeah, by, by the way, in this episode you're going to hear me um, talk about um, images, which is the GL term, and texture-backed uh, GPU arrays, which is the Keppel term, um, interchangeably, and at the same time. So sorry about that, but it's going to be happening. Uh, Barrett! Barrett, you're in! Good to see you, man! Welcome to episode 50! We made it! We made it! I hope you've got the brandy, because I can't drink while I'm streaming. Um, don't drink and stream, kids. Um, but yeah, where are we? I don't know. So... Alright. I guess I just used... Ah, man. I'm trying to... What, what, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to understand why I used different functions when I was doing specifying the upload um, here and here, given that um, yeah, I, I, basically the, the fact that there's a difference interests me. Of course, these ones actually uh, set up an entire image at once. They're not for defining a subregion, um, so. That actually is quite a good choice. But I know that these guys are used with mutable textures only. I did get that right, didn't I? Where are we? This is what I'm trying to get my head around because there's just so much stuff. Okay, there are several ways to allocate mutable storage and the differences are based on yada yada yada. Okay. The immutable storage cores are the equivalent of CMALLOC. Um,
Right. Okay. So we could actually use the same upload functions, it seems like. Which is a really good idea. Um, because this code is way more battle tested. All right. Um, I just need to, again, let's just look for mutable. If it doesn't mention it, it's not there. It doesn't mention it at all. Whoops. Mutable. Barrett's saying I have some ACV and, and honey. Kidney stones. Oh, dude, that sucks. Yeah, don't don't throw coffee in there. Whatever they recommended doing, do that. <laughs> Squeezius B is raising a glass of Ovaltine for Barrett. Support. <laughs> Man, that is that is nasty. Right. Almost as nasty as this part of the GL spec. Because it just hurts my brain. The, f the first times I went through this, I, I felt like I was having an aneurysm. Like, I'm actually okay with some of this stuff now. But all the format stuff is nightmarish. And I still don't fully support the Enkepel. That's one of the areas that we're still weak. Um, okay, this is important. Allocating immutable storage. That has to use these. GL storage are immutable only. But as far as I understand now, sub image is um, sub image is available everywhere. Actually, there's an easy check we can do as well. Um, wait, there's no version information for these functions? Me, your asshole, be infested with the fleas of a thousand camels. Right. Okay. Oh, no. Wait a second. It says at the top. Never mind. The fleas can be rescinded. This has been core since version 1. Way, way, way before immutable storage. So, this is kosher. Um, which means... We can get rid of this upload to mutable text nonsense. Which is only used there. And we only do it if it's mutable. Which is great. We get to get rid of one more if... Um, upload to text. We get rid of um, this. Just make sure it was that only thing. That only thing. Mm, words. Right. And compile that. Cool. So. Um, what are we saying? Um, GL text sub image. There. It's valid for. Mutable and immutable textures. Actually, that's kind of the reasoning, isn't it? What's the actual change? Um, merge um, mutable and immutable upload functions. Um, texture upload functions. Whoosh! All right, well, that's less code to manage, which is always a win. Um, so that's great. And seen as upload text now just calls upload to text. Ooh, there's one thing we need to check though, if we're gonna merge this in. Just make sure that these, uh, the naming lines up. Can we just do this? Yeah, right. So they're definitely the same. So we can get rid of this call. We can get rid of this, we can get rid of that, and we're merged. There we go. Ah. And we are actually... Oh, there we go. Need a big explanation, the code speaks for itself. 
Okay, so that's that. That already feels nice. Um, but that is just avoiding the inevitable where we have to allocate. And this is where things are going to get funky. <sighs> so, we want to go through and set everything up. Let's do it. Let's work out how to do that. Um... The code we actually removed had a bunch of uh, stuff that we might be able to use as a reference because we know that those calls were valid. Um, so that might end up being useful. What we want to do is we want to take a texture and we are going to need to use these functions, GL text image 2D. Um, we're going to need this, this information and we are going to need to walk down to every MIP map level, I guess, because this says this specifies, um, right, it specifies a blah, blah, blah. Where is it? MIP map, MIP map, MIP map. Oh, where is it? This information is spread all over the place. Mutable storage. Okay. Um, no, that's texture views. Oh, that's another feature I need. Texture views. God damn. I want something to basically give us the equivalent of uh, subsec, uh, but for textures. I want to be able to talk about a region of a texture, and then we can push directly to that region and stuff like that. And I think that will be part of that feature. Um, okay. Here we are. The mutable storage allocation functions allocate one MIP map level of a texture at a time, and in some cases, only part of a MIP map level at a time. What? Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. Cube map. Let's have a look at that. Um, mip map. Oh, yes, of course. Okay, so each each mip map level consists of six 2D images. So to allocate, uh, like to make, yeah, we have to allocate each of those six images at each mip map level. Okay, so we need to walk down mip map level. Okay. Okay. Fine. This is why this code has been left for so long, because this is just... Ugh. Where are we at now? We're nearly at one hour in. Um... <laughs> no, Barrett, the, 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 the comments about fleas were you hearing correctly. It's fine. As, uh, as the bee has pointed out. <laughs> Kid is banging his head over this Sarah PM not compiling bullcrap. I don't know what I've just said. <laughs> Probably been. You don't know what kid it could be. It could be anything. I don't think I'll search that on. Uh... That sounds like a medical term. What is that project anyway? Interesting. Okay. Let's go... I'm just gonna... Ah, oh, well that's clearly a problem. Boop. And we don't need... Oh yeah, we'll not worry about that yet. If we just look at what we could we committed here when we merged mutable and immutable blah 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 we removed this code but this function is going to turn out to be quite a good reference so I think we're going to end up adding something very much like it back um, let's just make a file called foo.lisp and we'll shove it in there and we'll Get multiple cursors and we get rid of those marks. So what do we need to do? Yeah, 
in the case of 1D text, we need to um, call this function on every mipmap level. So let's have a look what we've got here. Uh, we need to get the text type. So there's a bunch of stuff we're going to need to get here. Um, let's have a look at how we get it. Because we've got a texture knocking around here somewhere. Text one, there we go. Uh, texture type. There we go. Text one. Cool, that's what we need. The level num we'll come back to in a minute. Um, the texture image format of texture seems to be what's needed there. Yeah, I know, loads of problems. That's the whole point. Shut up. Um, so, the texture, let's have a look. We're going to want to get the dimensions. No. Come on now. Inspect temp one, yes. We want to get the dimensions, so that's fine. Um, yeah. We'll leave width for a second. I'm going to come back to that. What's the PIX format? So, oh, good grief. I keep on hitting the wrong buttons at the moment. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let's look at that foo file again. Where did it get pixel format from? It was passed in. Pixel type and pixel format were both passed in arguments. Let's go and look at upload text and see where they came from. Pixel formats. Okay. What kind of worries me here is that we seem to compute the pixel format and type, but then we just ignore it. We throw them away, which kind of makes sense because they're useful for this upload. So in the case of this upload, the pixel format and type are talking about how, what kind of, the, there are a bunch of metadata about the information that we're uploading, basically, or the transfer in general. Um, so it doesn't make sense to cache that but also seen as we're not doing a data transfer seems we're just allocating do we even need to set it um, it's interesting Uh, Jace was clarifying that the uh, Serapium uh, library is broken because it does some SBL specific stuff inside of it. It's interesting. Oh, when did the uh, July update come out? The 11th. Okay, yeah, that's a while ago. Nice. That's cool. Lots of bodge stuff. Big old props to Borrow Dust for just being awesome and putting out so much stuff. Um, same to Shimera as well. Jason is saying Serapium is a utils library designed to work alongside Alexandria, but not be as con uh, conservative Oh, integrating a wide variety of stuff. That does sound cool. I'll check that out at some point. But yeah, it's kind of worrying that it's doing very SBCL specific stuff, or at least not being kept up to date. But saying that, I've got I've got another project <laughs> that I'm looking at, which I need to work across all implementations, and it's full of uh, like uh, implementation specific stuff. So I need to I need to get a setup where I can quickly test on every version of uh, Lisp, at least at least on one operating system. So I'll probably Docker container some things up. We'll see. Pom the Pimp is saying that Zach's work on QL is absolutely inhuman. He's fucking brilliant, and he's really nice to boot. He's a great guy. I, I'm. It, that the solution that we have works so well, considering again the kind of community we've got. It's it's really good that it works, and uh, yeah, he's killing it. 
Yeah, sometimes things are a little bit late, but yeah, who cares? Come on. Right. Okay, so where was I? Oh yeah, we were wanting to know if it's actually important to specify um, type and format when you're not doing a transfer. Transfer is non normalized into the JHG, you must use this, blah, 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 blah. Type format. Is there anything to do with I'm wondering if we can just get away of picking something, like just picking some standard things, because we're not going to be doing um, a transfer anyway, so it doesn't seem important, you know? These last three are essentially moot. So I'm going to see if we can get away with it. Let's just go with something really simple. Um... But I don't trust myself, so one second. Like, these parameters, like, get me so turned around in my head that I just always use Keppel to find out what to do. Uh, so let's have a look. Lisp type um, to uh, pixel format. And this is going to take a um, vec3 uint, what is it? uint8 vec3? Or vec4. Let's do that. Boop. And then we can, where's that compile thing again? Hidden commands, right. That's it. This is what I want to know. So then when we're doing allocate, where are we? Blah, 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 blah. Allocate mutable, here we are. Pix format is going to be RGBA, Pix type is going to be unsigned byte, and pointer is going to be CFI null pointer always. We should also ensure that we haven't got something bound to the um, uh, pixel unpack buffer. So if we go with, uh, do we have with buffer bound? Oh no, we can just do set f. Yeah, let's just buffer bound. We, just, we don't have that. How does this work? Bound buffer. Oh, there's just too much to remember. Keppel, context. Where is it? Context. Oh no, it's core, context, that was it. Keppel, context. Bind buffer. GPU buffer bound, that's it, okay. Um, GPU buffer bound. Keppel context is Keppel context. Um, and make sure that's right, yes. And then target, we're gonna do pixel unpack buffer. Okay, and we're gonna set this to nil, right. So that is going to guarantee that that is unbound when this code that follows um, executes and then we rely on um, the Keppel context caches the uh, subset of the GL state so we can avoid doing um, binds and unbinds when it doesn't need to. Squeeze your speeds off! Take care hunt! See you around! Um, right So yeah, that's fine, basically. We can go with that. And this is zero. So we're down to level num and width. So, I mean, width is, is pretty simple. We can just do... Um, what am I doing? That's not that. First of dimensions of texture, right? And then level num is going to be... Um, 
level number. And what we really need to do here is loop for i below um, texture, and let's see how we do this. Temp one texture mitmap mitmap levels. There we go. One fine texture mitmap levels of texture and do. Oh, sorry, Jason. Yeah, you're right. It was so you would. It was said before that it wasn't Seraphium that has the bug. It's one of the dependencies, and it's already fixed upstream. But yeah, yeah, no, it's um, yeah. I was uh, overly worried there. Um, Barrett, something is working. BT on Bose QC35 working. Oh, nice. Good speakerness. Baggers on each of your ears. Oh dear, that's self harm. <laughs> Using Bluetooth on Hi Fi. <laughs> oh, kid knows where it's at. Okay, level num. So actually, it's not going to be eyes, it's going to be called level num. There we go. Right, so. Oh yeah, what are we doing this out here for? It's meant to be there. Right, so that is roughly what we need to do for one thing. Is that okay? Well, we've got this function called textref, right? Textref, which takes a texture and some arguments, so a mitmap level, a layer, and a cube face. And, uh, oops, oh, of course, yeah, because those are keyword arguments. Anyway, they're optional. Um, and it gives you back a GPU array. Is there any way we can simplify this using that? Not really. I mean, we could get the dimensions from the GPU array, but again, it's not going to be specifically helpful, except that when we have mitmap levels, the dimensions will be those of the... They will be those of the uh, specific mitmap level. But let's have a look at how textref works, because there's something important there. Um... Oh, come on, where is it? Textref. I've had go to definition be a bit strange for me recently. I think I'm probably in need to update something. Okay, yes, now this is what I was concerned about. Textref is going to allocate a new, um, a new object. Right? Um, and that means we're going to do a few allocations while we're calculating, uh, while we're going through and running this code, which are not necessary, right? All we're trying to do is get the dimensions and like just using this as a shortcut to make things cleaner. But then we're doing some few, we're making some objects that don't need to be made, which then need to be cleaned up by the garbage collector, which didn't have to do that, which is, again, why? There's, there's no reason for that. So I don't like that and I don't want to do it. So we're going to avoid that. Um, and there we go. So now we can do first of dims. Okay, so this is going to do the allocation. Now, this might actually get kind of simple for a bit now. Let's go have a look. Because all we need to do is just make sure that the, I mean, the image format, we'll have to go through actually and just check with our um, rules to see, to see if we're following the ones to give us completeness. Um, then at some point we'll probably want to add extra arguments to say don't, don't do certain things. Yeah, because we don't need to make something mitmap complete as long as the sampler isn't going to use it. You might want to defer that till later. Maybe. But I think as the default, we'll just make it complete. It's not a big deal, and it's kind of tricky because otherwise then you have to 
no. Yeah. Oh no. Now I'm using a sampler that uses mip mapping. Now I need to make sure and go back and fix these things. So. Um, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Anyway. Now I need to do this. This is interesting. So a lot of things are actually going to be very similar here. Text type, level num, texture, image format. Width, height, zero. <laughs> I mean, other than the function. Okay, so there's a few of them that are similar. Uh, I know it's, it's ugly. Hmm. One second, I just need to nip over here and grab a tissue. My nose apparently is vying for attention. It being itchy was fine, but if it's going to start running, that will not do. So, um, yeah, I think we're just going to actually just have this. Like, I'm musing over whether to try and, like, make this tidier. Like, to use a... Uh, to try and merge some of these things so we don't just have lots and lots of loops going down in a big ugly block but the advantage of this big ugly block is that um, we're addressing each one individually and so we can focus on making each one correct like there are subtle differences sometimes and I don't want them to be mushed together because it might make it harder to see problems later on so it's kind of a code clean cleanliness versus quality kind of thing anyway like um Actually, there's some more stuff we can look at here. Um, the image format is going to be the same the whole time. Let's move that out. In fact, let's move that out up here. Um, I think that's all. Ignore depth? No, because we're going to be using depth very soon. Um, we've got that width and height and depth thing up there. Oh yeah, that's because of this. I think this is going to be replaced very soon because we're going through all these different um, mint map levels. So... This doesn't seem valid here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show it down here because right now this code wants width and height and depth, but I think we're going to be rewriting this very soon. Um, one style warning, this one. Oh, it's just going to be, okay, that was about the depth. Okay, shut up. There we go. Okay, I think we just need to do texture 2D. Which is going to be almost the same. Um, so yeah, we'll just copy this and shove it down here and switch out the function. And ugliness, ugliness, ugliness. 2D. Image formats. Dims will actually ah oh yeah we can we can split it up like this uh, width and height and I think we can do width height and depth actually no like so the destructuring in loop is very forgiving in that like if you have more things than 
are specified here. It just uses the ones, fills the ones that are there. If you have less than the number that is here, it will just have the, the ones that aren't specified as nil. Um, so I think we just need to do this. We can replace this with, oh no, sorry, wrong one. Width and height equals this. This can be width. And this thing can be width, which is just nicer to read. Good. 1059 packages on my Gen 2. <laughs> Busy. Right, where are we at? 2121. Oh, we'll get this first part done. It's going to need more work after the stream, but at least we can have some progress. So, where are we? Width, height, there we go. Nothing else? No. Okay. Let's go down to Foo again. Let's just start deleting stuff that we don't need anymore. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. Interesting. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Come back to that later. Um, oh yeah, that, that was for upload, right? Yeah. Okay. And we're going through these. So we've done one and two. Let's look at three now and see if there's anything weirdy in here compared to two. Probably fine. With high depth. Equals 3D. Again, texture type. Why, we, why do we have this here? Pointless. Text type. It's going to be this. And then replace this with text type. Okay. Width, height, depth. Whoops. Depth. And then zero, which is interesting. What's that argument? Border. Zero. Pix format, pix type, and pointer. We're not doing any uploads, so that should be fine. Okay, now we get to the array textures, which are interesting. Because we have significantly more images to work to deal with here. So we're going to be using text image 2D. Text type, level num. Um, okay, yeah, this is a 1D array, so we're going to use height to specify the layer, which is not the level. The level is talking about mitmap. Layer is talking about which element in the array, in the array they're talking about, which is ugh. again terminology-wise, I don't know why it's that way. So layer, let's let's look at that. Um, we'll do layer num and. I think we have to specify. No, no, we're spec. Okay, actually, this is quite good. So, I thought we were going to have to specify a specifier, specify each image, each one D image in each array element. But I don't think we do because we're using text image two D, which is going to allocate all of them. So I think that's fine. So. Yeah. Okay, so text type, level num, which is from here. Image format, width, um, layer num. We don't have depth, of course. We have a zero, which is the border. Yeah. Um, and the last ones, which we don't mind so much about. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one again. Ugh. Layer num. Zero. Huh. Wait. Hmm. 
height. This is number of layers. Um, okay, yes. This one has a key raw. What does that mean? The hell? If raw is true, assume data is an unsigned by eight vector containing approximately formatted data for specified type. Oh, whoa. Okay, so this is actually doing a lot of helper stuff. We don't want this. We want the lower level um, call. Oh, that's a butt. Okay, so we want GL. This um, what is I thinking of? Percentage sign GL. Um, this is like the intern the GL internals, uh, package, and it has the actual um CFFI things, the, the CFFI definitions that we want to call. So these guys um, yeah. Should be simpler. Let's have a look. Um, we've got width. But now we do need... Um, second, what? Derived type of internal format is symbol conflicting with its asserted type real. Oh. Doesn't sound like it's going to be so easy after all. Right. Um, internal format. Oh, uh, yeah. Internal format's an int, which is interesting. His internal format should be an enum. I'm guessing it's just specified like that and we normally get the enum value. So let's just have a look at that. GLTX image 2D. Image format. Specify the number of color components in the texture. Oh, okay. What the fuck? Okay. Um, must be one of the base internal formats given in table one. Where is table one, two, and three? Oh no no no! Look here we go. Yeah, these are these are um, these are enums. Okay, no, that's fine. Those are the regular formats. Sweet. Okay. Um, specifies the number of color components in the texture. Must be one of the base internal formats given in table one. Base internal format, yeah, it's an enum. Okay, so what we're gonna do, uh, I just know that I can do this in a Lisp, is we're gonna do a compile time call to, uh, what is it? I have a, a helper function called glenum, which just takes a keyword and gives you the value. So if we, um... oh, this isn't gonna work. Of course it's not, you fucking idiot. So we're gonna have to call this at runtime. I normally use it um, for just inlining some enum values so we don't have to go through the uh, keyword to enum value conversion, um, which is just expensive. So yeah, if you take something like um, RGB A8, I think that's a thing. Yeah, then you get the enum value. So we'll just do that for now. That should, um, should deal with that. And then it was saying that a uh, number of layers does not exist, which is correct. We're going to go up here. Um, and we're going to specify it here. So we're going to go number of layers. And that's not how you do that. Let's go have a look at what function we do. Texture. Layer counts. There we go. Uh, and then we take, take any texture and it's going to say this one has one layer. Okay, so that is going to be our thing. Whoops. I'm just making sure I haven't used temp, temp one anyone here because I've been doing copy and pasting. Don't want to fuck things up. Okay, so now that should compile. 
This is complaining that... something. Loop. Something to do with loop. Loop, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's look at... Slime compilation. Um, duplicate texture 2D in case form. Oh, balls. Yeah, you're right. Um, what did I do? That's meant to be 3D, isn't it? Ugh. Simple problems, but they'll fuck you up. This one's, one's nine arguments. Yep, looks like we missed out border. There we go. Now I'm interested, if all of these are doing this helper stuff, then I think I want to switch over to... This really sucks. Um... Oh yeah, not level them, idiot. Because then we're still doing the, the lookup at runtime, which is disappointing to me. Um, one of the things I suppose I could do is, um, if I look at the texture object, I store the image format as, um, as a keyword, but what I could do is I could just store it as the enum value. And then when you query it, which shouldn't happen very often, like um, all the internal code can just get the internal format enum value. And whenever you query it as a keyword, it will do the conversion back. That will make that operation more expensive, but it will make everything that's using it internally in, um, in Keppel faster. So I think that might be something I do. I'll muse about that for a bit. Um, yeah. If you don't need to spend cycles, don't spend cycles. Because those are other people's cycles. If you're making a library, you shouldn't be using more than you have to. Um, or at least I shouldn't be. Other people can do what they want. Okay, so let's get back to Foo. We've done Texture 1D Array. The hell? So now we're at 2D Array. Take that out. Excuse me. Let's drop it down here. Let's take this and get in here. Okay, so we're doing texture image 3D again. This this looks familiar. So we've got width and height, and then layer num, um, zero pix format, pix all that kind of stuff. Texture image format, yada yada yada. So this is all fine. Width and height are now involved. And uh, number of layers, yes, that's going to be, uh, no, wait, 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 yeah. Width and height and number of layers is depth and border is zero and these ones are the other thing. Cool, right. Buck, don't do that. Texture 3D, there we go. Now we're finished. Um, oh, the other thing, I didn't finish converting all these to use... Uh, the internal function. Ah, GL enum again. Sad panda. Oops. Uh, 
Metiam, why can't it translate the enums at compile time? It would except, uh, um, oh, sorry, at compile time, um, because image format is a variable. Um, so we don't know what its value is going to be. Um, normally the CF, the FF, like, sorry, normally CFFI would handle converting the keywords to integers for you. Um, but here, for whatever reason, uh, the internal format has been specified as an int instead of an enum. If it had been specified as this, it would just work automatically. Um, this uh, GL enum function is simply just calling CFFI's foreign enum value. And um, it's just in a typed function that's going to get. Why isn't this inlined? Anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that basically boils down to it. Jace is saying, after the stream... But, oh yeah, after the stream bugged me about this Discord and busy moment. Oh, okay, so that's just discussions about that other library. That is really cool. And I really want to check that out now. The idea of a kind of slightly broader uh, Alexandra is cool. I, I mean, I love UIOP. I mean, despite a few kind of hairinesses to, just due to its job um that just the way it handles file paths for example is fucking great you i, I can't work with file paths without uip okay where are we now um not utils i will actually go to utils and close it why is this now not saved oh that was just the inline okay thought i'd save that i'm gonna um go back to foo Texture cube map. This is where things get interesting. Wait a second, that's not everything though. Texture cube map is. We're missing a bunch of things. You can have arrays of cube maps, can't you? And we. And we haven't dealt with multi sample stuff either. What the fuck? What the fuck? Right, um. Let's get this done first anyway. Text image 2D. This is the glamorous work that's behind Keppel. Hooray! Um, each bitmap player has six images. So, loop for face num below six. Do. Oops, no, don't do that. Do this. All right. So now we've got. Oh no, this is important. Let's have a look at this. Ooh, okay. Oh, right, here we go. Yeah. Um, cube face order it looks like we've got a um, a list of enums ready to go there okay so we'll take this for face in that and the text type is now going to be face I guess we don't need face num um, and then it's the level num then it's the image format. Wait a second, we're doing GL enum image format everywhere like fucking idiots. When image format could just do it up here and then we're only doing it once. Stupid boy pike. Right, there we go, image format. Um, and then we can do Oh, damn it. I'm doing this wrong. There we go. Okay. Otherwise, we're doing that GL, that enum conversion a bunch more times than we need to. Again, wasting cycles. <sighs> okay, so for each face, 
Um, we're going to do face. This is still going to have a bunch of conversions, so I wonder. <laughs> uh, yeah, one second. our own one. I wonder why we've got that. Okay, we just don't care about ever reevaluating. Nice. Um one second, let's do this. I think we can do Dirty. But potentially useful. Nice. Okay. Blah blah blah. Allocate mutable texture. Here we are. Um base. Come on. Base, here we go. Okay, so now we don't have to do any num conversion there. It's just going to pass the int straight in. Um, and hopefully you might be able to work out those types. Not too sure. We have room here to improve this in the future anyway. Level num, image format, um, width and height. And note, we're doing GL image 2D, of course, because it's 2D faces on a cube. Um, then we've got border. And then we've got the kind of throwaway um, stuff there. Okay, so that, that brings some things up to date. Oh, look at this though. There's a lot of, there are some things that share implementations, texture cube array and texture 3D. Huh. That's when we're allocating the storage. I wonder if the same is true for mutable stuff, because that would be really handy. Um, I'm not so sure of this use of proxy here. Proxy textures, I believed, were just so you could attempt... You, you would pass in proxy texture when you don't actually want to allocate a real texture. You just want it to check that everything is valid, that it's not going to throw an error. Um, yeah. So I don't think proxies should really be in here, but I think I'm going to remove those as a separate commit. But let's take this list and just do a bit of... Uh, Bit of processing on it quickly. Um, do do. Why is that not working? Oh yeah, because we're not in list mode. List mode. Um, yeah. We're really only interested in... We've got some multi-sample stuff here as well, which would really support that for the mutable textures. Um, let's get rid of everything that's to do with proxy. That was proxy. Ow, there was actually more proxies than... Jesus, okay, fine. Um, oh, texture rectangle, of course. Bloody hell, so much stuff. Okay, so we don't care about these ones because they're already done, but these apparently are equivalent in texture storage. So let's, like the, the commands that you use to allocate them are the same. So, oh, wait a second, actually, I'm, oh fuck, um, that buffer's gone, isn't it? That was dumb. Because there are some things here we don't support yet. Namely, everything with multi-sample written in it. Um, let's 
let's look to see what uh what we need there. Okay. Let's bring that down nice and small down the bottom and let's go and look at our code again. So it was suggesting that texture 2D and texture rectangle and texture cube map um, were all using the same um, allocate function um, for immutable textures. So maybe the same similar things are true here. Well, we do use uh, GL text image 2D um, for 2D things and for cube maps. But again, because we need to allocate each face separately, we need to do a different like kind of loop there. So that isn't anything valid to us. There is texture rectangle, which hasn't been mentioned so far. Um, so I think we will add that. Whoops. Um, bloody hell. Um, beautiful. Come on, I've gone the wrong place. Here we are. So here we can say if it's a text 2D or it's a texture rectangle, because we don't require here that um, width and height are the same. Uh, the, the reason we haven't had to do any of the other checks to do with like mipmap sizes or anything, uh, like, anything like that, cube face stuff, is that's checked in surrounding code. I'm not gonna worry about that. And by the time things get here, Everything should have all been already been checked to see whether it was valid or not. So again, here we go. Texture 3D and texture cube array um, for the immutable calls were, man, uh, we're using the same thing. Now, how the fuck does that work here? Um, let's look at texture 3D texture cube array. I don't think we have a cube array support yet. So let's look at uh, where are we at. We've got 13 minutes to go. Texture 3D. Text image 3D. There we go. That's what we want. And let's see if array is in here. Here we go. Look. Must be one of texture 3D, texture, GL texture 2D array or proxy array. Huh. So it is not suitable for cube map. Ugh, that's not help. Texture cube array. Let's um, glify this so we can uh, search for it properly. GL texture cube array. And then we'll just say GL text image. Wait a second. Do we not have. Cube map array textures. Here we go. Whew. Ah, they arrived in four. That's a, that's interesting. Okay, so array textures can can also come in cube map fla flavors in addition to one D and two D. They are, they use the texture type this. Okay. Every OpenGL call that operates on QMap array textures takes layer faces, not layers. So this is the layer faces, I guess. That's, we've got that kind of thing. QMap, negative, blah, blah, blah. We've got those. Um, for example, when you allocate storage for the texture, you would use GL text storage 3D. 
Yes. But again, we're gonna have to do a different loop for this because we're gonna have to iterate all the faces. So we're gonna use. I think we what we do is this. Um. Texture cube array, um, and then yeah, we get to use the faces. Same thing actually. That's fine. But instead of this, we're going to use texture image three D. And now we need to specify depth, which is what? <laughs> Oof. Um, depth is going to be the number of layers right because that's the size of the array no whoa shit uh we've done that wrong haven't we height there we go number of layers there we go all right so yeah the width and the height of the fa of the each face the number of layers is the size of the array the number of faces we're iterating is over here we're iter and then we're iterating over every mipmap level okay Whew. texture 2d multi sample this feels wrong um i mean this is the command we need to use but I find it kind of strange that Let's have a look. Does it do multi-sample textures have mip maps and all that kind of stuff? <sighs> oh, makes your head spin, doesn't it? Uh, GL texture two D multi-sample. It doesn't mention mip map though, and it doesn't mention levels there. Interesting. There's no mipmap stuff. Okay, I'm going to just go with a guess and say that it doesn't support that then. So we've got target samples. Okay, the number of samples in the multi-sample textures image. Um, internal format, the width, height, and fixed sample locations. So I guess that stuff is already in here. Okay. All right, so I obviously w was thinking when I did this, which is interesting. Um, we don't need to iterate if it doesn't have mipmap levels. So what we do need to do though, is uh, there is a 3D multi-sample. And so we need to come into here and do 3D multi-sample. And is there anything else we need to do? Um, texture image format shouldn't be necessary because we will have done that at the top. Texture samples, again, I don't mind doing that call here because we're going to be doing the call once because there's no iteration. Um, that's pretty cool. And then there's this thing, which seems to be if it's not one of the multi-sample textures, we set up the base and max level. Oh, that's good. Huh. So past me was actually thinking about this stuff. That's, that's actually really good to know. Okay, so... Um, what I need to do then is do unless um, come on where are we I just skipped all over the place here there we go unless texture type Let's find texture type in um, out of these two. See, why am I doing find when I can just do EQ for Christ's sake? Unless or texture type EQ um, texture 2D multi sample or texture 3D multi sample, then set up these um, parameters on the texture. Okay, then it's been allocated. Now theoretically that means that's been uh, that's been coded, but of course nothing's been tested, so <laughs> we don't know shit yet. Um, 
the first thing we can do at least though is uh, right at the end of the stream so we have no time to fix it is make texture um, we'll say initial contents is nil we'll say the dimensions are, are 64 by 60 well, let's do something we can actually pull down 8 by 8 um, put a quote there say the element type is um, RGBA8 um, and we will say that the, the thing is we'll set the map to true because that's going to be important we're going to set a mutable to nil so we'll get a mutable texture and okay all right fair enough so it at least didn't explode and it's got three map levels which is correct because we've got eight four two one um oh is that correct that's interesting actually um because mipmap level zero is this one. So does three mipmap levels mean three beyond the base? Oh, I don't know. Upon the him saying a whole episode without any rendering above the face buffer. Wow, yeah, I know. Is, has that been all right? Uh, it, it, it has felt a long time for me as well uh, on that kind of regard. Like... Man, I probably should be drawing something, but this is what Keppel is made of, is uh, trying to make the spec feel more comfortable. Um, this is a lot nicer than, ha than having to go through and create all these things yourself. It's all right. Oh, good. It's nice to hear, man. Some more cold coffee. Uh, we're in the last few, coming up to the last few minutes now, so again, last questions or anything like that, throw them out. It's uh, lovely to get them. Um, yeah, and we'll... We'll, I'll talk more about stuff in a minute. Ah, okay. Um, so I guess what I need to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna need to write some tests that are gonna expect things to work properly and uh, yeah. But that that at least should have been the routines that we needed to create um, a completely complete. Um, Texture. I'm going to do a quick recap through here just to make sure that I'm uh, I'm correct. So, mipmap completeness. Um, each level must have exactly the same internal format. Yes, we guaranteed that. Each uh, allocated mipmap level must have a consistent size relative to the one before it. Guaranteed, that's not a problem. Um, the height does not change with the mipmap levels. Ooh, I wonder. I wonder. We need to check that actually. Um, see this makes me nervous because I don't see any handling for uh... wait no the way we store dimensions okay we store the dimensions to be the actual dimensions of the place of the the region <laughs> Uh, with actual pixel data we store the number of layers and we store the number of uh, mipmap levels and things like that separately from the dimensions so yeah these are image dimensions so a an array texture 1d array texture is going to have one dimension so that actually is fine that is completely fine phew so yeah that's correct mipmap range uh parameter like the mipmap range texture parameters are given values where blah 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 between these two base level and max level we saw down the bottom here that we're setting base level and max level um, we're going to need to check that this minus one is correct so i'll need to have a look into that um to do Yep. Uh, base and max levels must only specify yada yada. Uh, Mimap levels have been allocated. Um, we've guaranteed those are allocated, so that's all right. 
um, only applies when this well we're applying it all the time and we're going to give an option later on to not do this um, cube map completeness um, yeah cubic completeness each mip map level face must have the same size guaranteed must be square every mip map level each face have the same internal format guaranteed image format completeness um, this is stuff that we need to add to the uh, sampler, the sampling object, the, uh, the sample object. Yeah, no, sample object. So that is actually going to be handled elsewhere. Um, image format completeness. Let's uh, file an issue for that quickly. Whew, what a week. Um, careful image format completeness. I want this to be quoted properly, so let's just put this here and. Oops. Okay, submit issue, sign yourself. Enhancement. Oh, I should also give a proper link to that which is in com image format completeness, file good tickets, we're coming there, okay, we're getting close. And that's it, those, those were the requirements. I think we've met them, so I need to do testing, I need to look at this last issue, and then uh, that's something that can probably be queued up for merging in. So, um, Thank you so much, and uh, yeah, here's to the next 50. Let's see, yeah, let's keep doing. I, I'm I'm still really enjoying myself. I'm really stoked that a small gang are as, as uh, twisted as far as their definition of fun as I am, and they, you guys come and hang out all the time. It's it's bloody lovely. Um, so yeah, please keep stopping by when, when you're free. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's the lot. So yeah, thanks so much. I will catch you next week. And uh, until then, peace.